Hi friends, today we will discuss the answer for question number 24 that I gave yesterday. It was General Studies paper 1. History. I have given the question from the medieval history. So the question is regarding the travelers. The travelers. The question says several writers followed the footsteps of the great Al Baroni and Ibn Baduta in writing their travelogues. Travelogues means these travelers, as they travel, travel to different countries or regions, they will write their experiences about the people, about the caste system, religion, beliefs, the kings, etc. in the places which they have visited. They are called as travelogues. So there are many writers who followed the footsteps of these two great writers while writing their travelogues. That is the statement given. Then in this context, explain the contribution of these two travelers, that means Alberoni and Batuta. You have to uh, explain the contribution of these two travelers in understanding the Indian history. So basically, in understanding Indian history, we have several Indian writers also. However, you can say that only through the foreign writers, you, you can get the fine details. For example, as these people like Alberoni and Ibn Battuta are from other countries and other cultures, they, they belong to a different social culture. So even the small aspects of Indian culture or society of India, which are taken granted by the Indian writers, would be looked at very differently by these writers. So they will describe even the finest things. In that way, their contribution to Indian history is very different. So you should write this answer in seven minutes as 10 marks answer. Generally in the history, what my suggestion is, whatever facts you know, you try to write the facts in the introduction only. So that, see the evaluator would be evaluating several papers, several copies. So uh, generally there, there are many students who even if they do not know anything, for example some students do not know anything about the question. Even then they, they will write something like, you know, Al Baroni, Nibiruddha, the greatest travelers, in the Indian history, they traveled to different places in India, they wrote about the kings, they wrote about the culture, they, they talked about the rich heritage of India. You know, you can write like this. Generally, a student who writes the mains will not leave these kind of questions. He will write something and in between, he will write few facts. If he knows that even Batuta uh, worked under Tughlaq, he will say that Muhammad bin Tughlaq appointed Ibn Batuta in his court. Somewhere in between, they will write the facts. So what happens is the evaluator, while he is correcting several papers, he will come through these kind of answers where the student does not know any fact, but he will try to somehow make up the answer. Uh, so students will still get some three or four marks if they write, uh, you know, really good language. They can explain really well without having any knowledge. Still some students can get three marks. So if you are a student who knows some facts, try to write all those facts in the introduction itself. So that evaluator will understand that, okay, this candidate is different. This candidate actually has some knowledge on the question given. So he'll get the good impression. Then in the remaining body, you write whatever you want. So this is my, this is my suggestion for questions of ancient history or medieval history. So let us first try to, in the introduction, let us directly come and write, write the facts. So in the introduction, we will say, Al Baruni has come to India from Uzbekistan in the 11th century. And his book, his book about India is called Kitab Alhand. Similarly, Ibn Battuta has come from Morocco in the 14th century. And his book, his travelogue is called Rihla. And you can say that these writers have given importance even to the day-to-day -day activities because they are from different countries and hence everything in India appears very different to them. So they described in detail about every aspect which is taken granted by the local writers. Even the style of writing is very exquisite. So for example, uh, Al Baruni's style of writing, uh, he first starts with a question, then he will write a description. Finally, he will compare, he will compare that, that Indian thing with his country, with his culture. It's a very unique way of writing. So these are the things, these are the things which have been, which have inspired the later writers. So, so see the question has given several writers followed their style. So how can you remember these several writers? Simple. This, actually this topic is in NCRT uh, Themes of Indian History Part 2. So
So NCRT itself has given some writers. So if you remember whatever one or two names, if you know all this name, you say Abdul Razak and many other writers. If you know a few more names, you can write. For example, Abdul Razak visited South India in 1440. Uh, even Muhammad Wali Balki, who visited India in 1620, even Sheikh Ali Hazim, who uh, traveled around the North India around in 18th century. So these writers have traveled in the footsteps of Al Baruni and Ibn Battuta. Not only the foreign travelers, even several Indians who went abroad to other countries, who traveled to other countries, even they have uh, written the travelogues similar to Al Baruni and Ibn Battuta. Almost several travelers during this 1400-800 have read the travelogues of Al Baruni, Ibn Battuta, and they tried to imitate their style. In that way, the first statement can be explained. You can say that most of them described India as a land of wonders and you know they, most of them compared the Indian culture with their cultures. Now come to the question where they asked about uh, explain the contribution of these two travelers in understanding Indian history. See when it comes to the contribution, see as I am telling the answer now, I am prepared, definitely I can tell more points. But in the actual exam you cannot tell more points. So generally I would give you a rough idea of how to write an answer for this kind of questions. For example, take Al Baroni. Al Baroni. You definitely have to write certain specific aspects. Specific aspects means, for example, Al Baroni, Al Baroni talked about the caste system of India. Specific aspect. Then, some broad aspect. Broad. So, for example, you can say that uh, he actually discussed different cultures, different kinds of people, different states in India. That is broad aspect. Similarly, when you write about any writer, any writer, you write one or two facts and you write some general things. General things means every writer will write some general things like you explain the Shosho political system of India. You will ex explain how during those times the scientific, uh, you know, the chemistry or biology or medicine of India or they will write about how different kingdoms are established in different places of India. Means some general things, common things, you keep some 4 to 5 points which you can write for any writer. At the same time, use some facts which you remember about this writer. Okay? Now let us come. In the book Kitabul Hund, in the book uh, Kitabul Hund, Al Baruni discussed various things, the religions, different religions of India, particularly the Brahminism, the philosophies, for example, Sankhya philosophy. He described Sankhya philosophy, different festivals of India, the astronomy. As you know, the, in ancient India, there are several books on astronomy. He studied them. Albert studied them, he described astronomy, about Indian astronomers. Then you know the alchemy, the different manners and customs of India, different social life, even the weights and measures, the mathematics part, he has he's described. Even the laws, meteorology, he described all these things. Similarly, uh, actually Albaroni uh, knows several languages. Sanskrit, you know, even the Pali, the Brahmi script, and uh, Arabic, Persian. That's why he is not a, he is not he not only translated the indian books into arabic but he also translated the european books into sanskrit for example the euclid's geometry euclid's mathematics several indian brahmins wanted to learn euclid uh, mathematics which was there in the greek language and it is translated by him into the sanskrit language for indians so he, he has translated the patanjali's grammar the gita purana samkhya into Arabic, Samkhya philosophy, into Arabic. And as I told you already, his unique way of writing starts with a question, describes it, then compares Indian culture with, with uh, his country's culture. For, uh, the most important thing in his way of writing is he has got a, you know, an inquiry, a scientific inquiry style of writing. Basically, as he is a kind of mathematician, his way of writing is highly technical and scientific. So, this actually inspired many writers later to follow his style. However, regarding India, he has he discussed certain positive aspects and negative aspects. See, one thing I will tell you is, about whichever writer, which, about whichever traveler you are writing, you tell certain positive things the traveler told and also to certain negative things the traveler told. Both you have to write. For example, a common negative thing you can, which you can tell about any traveler who has come to India is that he has found some robbers in the forest and about the caste system, about social evils, they need to do this one. A positive thing you can uh, write about is tolerance between uh, tolerance among different religions, rich cultural heritage, you can write. 
Similarly, here also, the negative aspects that Al Baroni said about India is the India socio political order is not very structured, is not stable. That is why invaders were easily able to defeat the Indian kings. He said that Indians give more importance to tradition than the quest for knowledge. They give more importance to religion than the scientific spirit of thinking. That is why they could not advance fast in the medieval times. India could not develop in the medieval times. He said that, you know, there are, he, in fact, uh, Al Baroni clearly mentioned that there are four Varnas the Brahmin, Kshatriya, the Vaishya, Shudras, and even described the functions of each Varna also. He also talked about social evils. He said that widows cannot get remarried in India and most of them practice a practice sati, even child marriage. He talked about child marriage in India. And he said that Brahmins are not allowed to travel outside the country, outside their regions. So he actually said that they are mostly, you know, closed attitude. And he said that most of them have got the false superiority that their culture is the richest culture in the world. They are the greatest in the world. In fact, they are not ready to exchange their ideas. For example, certain specific things about each traveler. About each traveler, you have to remember one specific thing. For example, Al Baroni said that Indians have got red teeth because they chew the bitter leaves. Bitter leaves and arica nuts. You know, the arica nuts. Like this. Similarly, let's go to contributions of Ibn Battuta. Ibn Battuta, who came from Morocco in the 14th century. So his book is Rihala. In Rihala, he mentioned very clearly about the social life of Indians, the cultural life of India, different people in India, in different states, different people of India, their different belief system, different value system. So these are the common things he write about every, every traveler, as I told you. Then, he, as he was appointed as Kazi by Muhammad bin Tughlaq, he has got more knowledge about the Indian law and order, how the Muslim laws were applied in the Indian context. And also he was a globe trotter. He went to Sri Lanka, Maldives, China, West Asia, Syria, several countries, several countries of regions. So he is able to compare the Indian culture with several countries in the world. He in fact, he, he has given the traveling distance and time also. For example, he said to travel from Gwalior to Delhi, you take, you know, almost 10 hours. Whereas Sindh to Delhi, you take 50, sorry, 10 days, 10 days, not hours. Gwalior to Delhi, 10 days, Sindh to Delhi, 50 days. This gives us an idea of how they used to travel, how the transportation system in those days was. It gave a clear picture and several Indian writers did not describe this. As he was a foreign writer, he, he wrote very clearly about the transportation system followed by India, how much time we take from one place to another place. Also, he discussed both the capitals of Tughlaq, Delhi as a capital and Dolutabad, both capitals he discussed about the life in the capital cities. Then he, he talked about robbers. He was wounded several times. His, his, you know, uh, some of the books he has brought, some of the property, some of the jewels or the, the money he brought was been robbed in India. So he says that several pockets of India does not have, does, are not under the control of any king. Also he discussed, see, I told specific thing, for example, the red teeth. Red teeth is a specific thing of al -Buruni. Similarly, Koi Kud. Ibn Madhuta described the Koi Kud in Kerala as a famous port of India. So these kind of points will actually make the evaluator know that you actually read about the writer. If you write only these kind of broad things, evaluator actually will think that you are writing some nonsense, you are writing some general stuff. So write specific things also. I know that most of us do not know more specifics. It is enough if you know three to four specific. Remaining sheet you fill with values, beliefs, culture, social, all the other things that you write generally. Okay friends, so conclusion. How do you conclude these kind of questions? My suggestion is generally ancient history, you can conclude saying that their writings, you know, have, uh, the writings have uh, given us information about the rich culture, rich tradition about the Indian history. You can say the writings are a window to the past. So they gave us more information about our past. So like that you can end, end the answer. Friends, this is a question for tomorrow. Genesis paper 2, this comes under polity, constitution of India. So the question is about the governor's power to dissolve state assembly. This is also 10 marks question, 150 words, you are writing in 7 minutes, around 1 and a half page, 2 pages. Okay friends, see you, take care, bye.